Hello and welcome to this online broadcast from Whitechapel Gallery. My name is Jane Scarth and I'm the Curator of Public Programmes at the Gallery. Tonight's event is a particularly special moment. It's the result of much commitment and hard work and the adversity of this pandemic. And I'm really thrilled that we're able to host this event this evening. In the autumn of 2019, together with my colleague, curator Emily Butler, we introduced Jo Moran to artist Carlos Bunga, an artist that had been invited to fill our galleries with a brand new sculptural installation for over six months a major part of our 2020 exhibitions programme. The exhibition was set to change three times during the course of its run. Carlos Bunga would return on three occasions to uh, alter the, the physical structure of the, um, of the exhibition. And this was a way for him to engage with different ways of thinking through the architectural space, temporality and presentness. As a result of this, and in the, it was within this context that um, he invited Joe Moran um, to also engage with the space on three separate occasions. And there was to be a symbiotic relationship between the installation and the structural changes that Carlos would create and Joe's choreography. Months of preparation and the development of a new site specific work with a group of dancers built up to the first performance scheduled in March, the week that lockdown began in the UK. Needless to say, all performances were cancelled. And so embarking on a new way to share the work that had developed became a real exciting uh, new project for Joe. And as the curator of public programmes, it was also fascinating for me to share in conversations with him about what happens to performance when the essence of liveness is compromised. The outcome, a dance work for film, definitely navigates the relationship of bodies to space, but also the translation of space and bodies to film. It importantly processes as well complex temporalities. Bunga himself speaks of the installation as the conjunction of past, present and future. And Joe's work exists within these temporalities and also disrupts them. The work you're about to see offers new contextual frameworks for experiencing something necessary and useful, the exhibition by Carlos Bunga. And it navigates dance's potential within architectural space, the physicality of the dancer's voice, and also the moving body as a site of political unrest and complex subjectivities. Before we begin, I'd like to mention uh, that the film is 30 minutes. So please stay tuned after the screening for a Q&A with Joe and also with the performers. And I'd like to make a short announcement about two resources that are available in conjunction with this event. The first is captions, which will automatically appear on screen during the live conversation. These are generated by an artificially intelligent software and so may not be perfectly accurate. Um, but for the performance itself, you can also find a pre-prepared transcript on the Whitechapel Gallery's event webpage. Finally, I want to thank Joe Moran for his amazing commitment to this project, to also Carlos Bunga for his generous invitation to develop a dance work for the space, and to my colleagues Emily Butler and Ines Costa, the curatorial team behind Carlos's exhibition. Um, and of course, also for their collaboration. I'd also really love to uh, say my sincere thanks to the dancers, Temi Ajose Cutting, Sean Murray, Tom Hayes and Eve Stainton for their incredible performances and for their patience as the work developed over a number of months. So now it's my great pleasure to say it's time for the premiere of Materiality Will Be Rethought. Okay, so welcome back. Um, we're now joined by Joe Moran and performers Temi Ajose Cutting, Sean Murray, Eve Stainton, and Tom Hayes. If anyone is just joining us, we just watched a remarkable new film by Joe Moran and we're about to start our Q&A. So if you're watching live, um, we've actually just now enabled the live chat function. So if you have questions and comments, head to YouTube and you can post them there and we might be able to pick them up at the end. Um, but otherwise, I'd like to launch straight in, as it were. So, um, Joe, the work engages with the environment in a really considered and playful way. 
what were the features of the installation that you picked up when you were creating the work? And here, I guess I'm talking about the physicality of experimenting within the architectural environment created by Carlos Bunga in the show and how you developed uh, and responded to that through uh, creating the work itself. Yeah, of course. Um, hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, I think something that felt really central when we were approaching this project was was thinking about a kind of a, a relationship between dance and choreography and, and its sculptural environment um, and uh, thought that, um, you know, dance in a gallery can sometimes be there as a kind of um, ornament or ornamation of the, the space um, or sculpture. So a kind of add on. Um, or conversely, that in, in a kind of dialogue between um, dance and a sculptural context, that um, sculpture can kind of just operate as a backdrop or a kind of stage set for performance. So I think I was really conscious of that and also um, in the kind of research and making of the work to think about how there can, there can be a, a dialogue between the works. And I think a point of connection that really interested me in Carlos's work um, is a sense that um, I think Carlos is working with um, a kind of making strange of the object or a complication or a disruption of the object. And that really spoke to me to a lot of what I'm interested in my choreographic practice of, of a, a complication of, of the body or how we see the body, um, particularly in, in proximity and in kind of entangled relationship to, to other bodies. Um, so that that was a kind of in, a kind of critical inquiry that felt the, the, where our works could meet, um, and then the other side of that, I felt like um, the environment was so compelling and so, uh, in a way, kind of seductive, in in that it uh, as a as a sculptural work, it really implies the body. It really, I think, choreography and sculpture have such an intimate dialogue, or or in a way work with very similar tones or similar terms and inquiries and there was a sense for me of wanting for what what we did to not um, just be about animating this kind of beautiful architectural environment and so for the dance to have a kind of weight and potency to stand up to the environment um, so bringing in the voice bringing in text a kind of really strong urgent physicality um, and then finding a relationship with different aspects of the um, of the environment that was perhaps less obvious um, than than you know adorning a column or which we explored quite a lot and and, and had to let go of I think <laughs> yeah so those are some of the kind of inquiries that were at play and. Um... I wanted to also pose a question to the dancers to bring you into the conversation as the performers in the work. Um, I wonder if you could talk a bit about the rehearsal stages and what the process of making this as a live work with Joe, and then of course the re-adapting of that for the creation of a film was like for you. Or maybe um, maybe Eve could go first, and then we can go through to Sean and Temi and Tom. Yeah, hi. Um yeah, I think I think I've I've done a bit of work kind of with film and for me in this particular project it felt sort of important that we spent quite a bit of time like in inside the exhibition that kind of in, like inhabiting the environment. And um, so it sort of became a site for the performance. So I think how I engaged with the camera as as an object um, it almost became as though it was it was a spectator or someone viewing a performance work, um, so I could kind of be in in dialogue with it and other things in the space as though I was. It was a very performative relationship for me, I think. It and also having the um, the kind of cardboard walls, the kind of architecture, I felt as though there was this real feeling of presence. Um, which then I, I guess it allowed me to have a kind of multi-dimensional experience or a feeling of being live in a, like a live dialogue with those elements. 
Chon, do you want to say something about that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think was, I've not really worked much with film before. Um, and I guess what I found quite um, interesting was when, because we, we, we had done a, um, a dress rehearsal before we ended up having everything kind of shut down due to, a, <laughs> uh, to COVID and the pandemic and everything. Um, and running the whole show from beginning to end was a very particular kind of conscious experience. And the, the experiences of going from one of those sections to the other, um, you kind of take, a, you take a, that experience with you and it affects the, the next part and the next part. Um, and so then, yeah, when, when it comes to filming and repeating things and uh, trying things again or from different angles, there's, yeah, it's a different kind of way of how do you, um, how do you keep that journey or that the kind of alive or um, the, the kind of proposed journey that you've already been on or um, that's coming up and how do you remain true to being in that kind of activity in that task or that space or the configuration between each other and yeah it's, it's yeah it's from and so that's what I found really interesting when we were doing from, going from this idea of this live work to a filmed work and yeah. <laughs> Tom, do you want to say what it was like for you as well? Yeah, for sure. No, I think, um, am I on mute? No, you're good. Okay. I think, um, personally, the way that we had the rehearsal period, it was the best way that we shot the film. I was really happy with the way that we shot the film because everything felt like it's had it, it had its own home and it was very methodical and the pace of it was very, I suppose, relaxing in the right places and it kept me on my toes in the right places. <laughs> I felt as if um, every, everywhere had its home. When we shot, it felt very calming to me. I, 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 th I think it was, a, it was probably one of the best transitions from a performance piece to a film piece I've actually been in just from the way it was considered. I think a lot of theatre and film transition into film is obviously quite hard because it's made for a different audience. It's made for a different way that different way that the audience works. But um, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Thank you very much. And Tammy, can we hear from you about your experience? Um, yeah, um, I think um, finding the, my voice was felt really, really exceptional in this experience. Um, it, it reminded me of about some of my work about who who gets to speak publicly and what we get to speak publicly about. And the text, it felt quite political and strong and powerful and it felt like we were choreographing our voices, which felt like an extraordinary experience, really. So I really enjoyed and loved that. Finding the shout is not something that you often get to do as a dancer. Shouting text that you've learnt and, um, and it was kind of ferocious in a way. It felt very physical, very visceral to be able to scream out this text. And also there was an ambiguity about it because it wasn't like... Um, uh, we placed a particular uh, method onto how how we delivered the text, but we wanted volume, so it was had that unfixity that kind of shows a lot in the work. Um, I think the architecture gave a, an immediacy to the uh, project. We had to deal with the architecture. We were balancing on the architecture. We were using it to support our bodies. We were using it to stop us from falling, from dropping. From So there was a real reality about us facing um, the architecture. And I really loved that because it became almost like work, workmanship, craftsmanship in many senses. And um, there was something else about how 
how our body, what our bodies meant to one another. That was extraordinary. Um, often you really know, um, like sometimes it's very literal what what each person is or who each person is um, in the space. And till this day, I, I don't know who we were to each other. And I think that was really beautiful because sometimes we were helping and aiding each other. And then other times, actually, it was like we were an obstacle. So it was really exciting, this play. There was a real risk constantly <laughs> in the film and in, in the live action where we needed one another's bodies to help us to shift to the next position or to shift in space. And we had to have this um, intense listening constantly to where the weight was shifting and who was giving, who was reliable, who was holding. Um, so... I think it had an effect on the way we felt in the performance because it wasn't, um, often you know the flow of performance and the timing that it's going to take, but actually in this, it had to take the time it had to take. So as a performer, you then were in the performance in a different way because you were dealing with reality that if I shift now, someone's going to fall. If I shift now, someone could get hurt. And it was that element of risk constantly in the work meant that there was something really unique in how we uh, related to one another. Thanks. Um, Jay, maybe you want to respond to some of that. I mean, I have another question for you, but let me know if you wanted to respond to anything that these guys said. It's, it's really great to come together and have this conversation because we... Um, you know, we haven't seen the film together yet and we haven't had chance to, in a way to kind of debrief it and have this conversation. And um, the last time we were all together is when we were actually filming. And the next day, Sean sent a text to our group chat saying, okay, is it done yet? <laughs> Ready to see it. <laughs> I think we had, we had a real kind of momentum on the back of it. Um, so it's really, it's really fantastic to, to hear these reflections and yeah, they, they really kind of, resonate for me a lot lots of what what you're saying hmm. that immediacy that risk yeah the complexity and I guess for you Joe this was you know you've made films of your work before and you've collaborated with filmmakers but I think this is the first time you would probably say that you situated yourself as a director um, which obviously was a, a result of kind of the conditions uh, that were created by COVID but it was also a, a, a decision and a choice to take mm. it in that direction um, and so can you say a few words of reflecting on the piece and, and your experience of making it I guess with that in mind? Yeah um, when we were filming I um, made this really conscious decision to say um, to say go rather than action which is often a term that's used in dance. <laughs> if, we're in, if we're doing a kind of rehearsal and we might say, and go. Um, so I, there was something in that where I felt like I really wanted to, and I feel this a lot, particularly when working in the visual arts, I really wanted to hold on to um, dance and choreography and, and for us to, you know, there's so, so much written about in terms of dance and the visual arts, um, but the, you know, dance is a kind of has its own critical history and its own discourse and legitimacy. And um, it was just a kind of playful nod in the filming process to that. Um, but when we were in conversation after COVID happened and we cancelled all of the three three uh, parts of of this of this project, we were going to show three live iterations. Um, and, and you and I, Jane, started having this conversation about the possibility of reimagining the work as a film. Um, uh, yeah, it, it felt to me um, that, that in kind of in, in, in broaching that, that there was something a bit disingenuous about asking another artist to collaborate with me on making, on making a film work because it felt to me that this film, this, this work was kind of made. And so the idea, I kind of think for a collaboration that you're kind of creating something together. Um, of course, there are loads of different ways of collaborating, but in this instance, I, in, in our conversations, it, I realized that actually 
um, the invitation wouldn't really be there to another artist to collaborate. I, I had quite a clear idea on what I wanted to do. Um, and yeah, and so the way, the way we kind of developed that was to bring on board um, a cinematographer, Alana Gonzalez, and then also to work with um, uh, the amazing editor, Sue Giovanni. And, and so collaborating in that way, but in kind of in a more familiar mode of how film is made. So me being a director. Um, and yeah, as you say, I've worked with lots of different artists. Sam Williams, I've worked with quite a lot recently on, on more collaborative film making. So this was a whole new chapter. And um, yeah, I, 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 I really enjoyed it. I felt that there was, a, as you know, I think as, as others are saying, it felt like there was, a, there was something that really made sense about this shifting into a film. And I think sometimes that doesn't have the feeling, but this, this felt like it, it, yeah, it made a lot of sense. So, and I think that's probably to do with how the film was structured, how the performance was structured somehow really lent itself to that transition. Yeah, and I think that, you know, in those early conversations and we were kind of speaking to colleagues about, you know, ways in which this might work. And I think it was very clear that there was a such a, the structure was there. So the story was there and those, those things that map over into filmmaking uh, and having to kind of learn uh, sort of some of those processes, it, it felt like quite a natural mapping onto that. So I think that that was um, a really strong kind of, it gave us something you really something really strong to work with and build from. Um, I'd like to. Oh, did you want to say something for that? No. I was just going to say there were there were also some surprises, particularly in the editing, that about what didn't translate. And I think the sense that we are so kind of tutored in or so familiar with the digital image, it was it was really apparent through the edit that um, that what we had in the performance, not all of it translated into film. So we took out a whole six minute section at the end, this kind of mirroring section. Um, and also a solo um, for Eve that's become a separate kind of short companion piece. So that, that was also really interesting. And, and actually the, the blanket section, um, it was just fascinating that some, that we had three takes and, and each had a very different tone. Some was, I mean, everyone will have their own view on the take that we used, but some of the takes were just really cringy. And, <laughs> and, and others just, and another one was just really flat. It was just very boring. Um, whereas I, I felt the one we used did have this kind of humor. And, and it was interesting that that was there in, you know, actually in the film, in the take, and it wasn't there in other takes. So, yeah. Yeah, so lots of interesting learning at the same time. Mm. And um, so this next question is, um, it's for Joe, but I want everyone to kind of answer it and respond to it. And I think maybe we can open it up into a broader conversation. And it kind of comes back more to the work itself as opposed to kind of the filmmaking process. But the work uses a really wide range of devices, um, a, a wide range of registers and modes of performance. Um, and so I wanted to ask you to talk a bit about the reasons for these sorts of oscillations and really those are kind of complexities that are in the work in that sense um, and, and how they exist in the work and why they exist in the work. And just to kind of think about that and open that up both for you as a choreographer and then to the performers, uh, you know, as dance artists kind of responding and working within that. Hmm. Do, do others want to respond <clears throat> before me? I've been talking quite a lot. <laughs> Felt like there were so many happenings um, in the work and it meant that almost uh, as a performer and in the creation process, you couldn't rest on one fixed state of being. So also as an individual, but also as a collective, they felt like there was a complete, um, there was an unrest about it, which mm. I think politically really makes sense about what the work is looking at, this unfixity of, of, of being. Um, 
you know, we had to manage continuously different what modes of being and extreme modes of being as well, you know, yeah, from uh, very assertive driving force to the quiet disappearing body, um, to the body that had to hold and carry, to the body that had to lift. So, um, and then the, the hiddenness of being in blankets. So it was quite a, a kind of unsettling, um, process and an unsettling performance in many ways because of all these modes that you had to take yet as a collective as a group we were very familiar with one another and there was a beautiful unity continuously throughout the process I mean I think Joe would agree it's been like one of the most beautiful <laughs> hilarious groups <laughs> formed and maybe we couldn't have reached these um, moments of extremity had we not been so united yeah. and comfortable, a bit like what Tom said, really comfortable and calm and joyful with one another. Yeah. I, th I think um, if I can just get in here, I think um, th the lighting of everything really played a lot for me. I think when the scenes were darker, it was a lot more of a, a collective feel I think I think about the when we had the thing over our heads or when we went into the sculptures itself it was very calm and collective and I yeah. felt like I could allow the space to speak for itself and I think that's the thing as a dancer you don't get opportunity to really do let the space speak for itself and let the rely on the structure to work for you and I think it yeah, I've not really had many opportunities to do that. I think um, I just keep thinking back to that bloody scene with Sean, really. Like when I was on your shoulders. I I, I don't know how I did that. Yeah. I really don't know how I did that, Sean, yeah. honestly. No. <laughs> I, 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 I think, yeah, I mean, it took us back to like the shade of the scene as well. That was that was probably the brightest moment of, of in terms of the light upon me. I've just watched the film. And it's the brightest moment, the thing, and it's, 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 yeah, it really scared me doing that. So I, I, th I think I just, I think about the colours and I think about the shades collectively. Yeah. I've never really worked like that together, really. So, yeah. 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 It's a bit like, um, like texturally, or I don't know if you imagine it's some kind of like patchworky tapestry sort of thing. There's so many different, uh yeah like shades lights and colors but also the feeling of watching it and seeing it and but then also doing it as Temi was saying as well moving from there's times where like when we're bouncing around there's this kind of joyous kind of kind of sprightly thing and the next thing i know i'm being stood on for what feels like 10 minutes and it really affects your kind of um your feet your the sense of yourself and your body and you're just this carrying thing and then suddenly you're holding someone's head and then you're moving through things with each other and all the, all these agreed kind of configurations so yeah i think yeah it was kind of these contrasting textural elements that i feel then um show or um, reveal the relationships between each other and the space and the, the sculpture and yeah and um carlos's work and joe's work as well yeah yeah i think like it makes me think about the title like materiality will be rethought and how it's such mm -hmm. a such a big proposition and yeah. <laughs> in terms of these sort of um modes of like performative modes or strategies of like dealing with these different things or becoming or enhancing certain parts of ourselves or myself kind of it makes me think about um like the materiality of what what is the my materiality what is my makeup and how i sort of carry with me my like histories my conditioning my sexuality gender like you know my beliefs and values and how when they're in kind of 
um, dialogue with other people, but also other matter in the space, like it becomes really complex and complicated. So I felt like these different modes allowed me to sort of reach into those things more, kind of enhance those relationships or so, sort of have it control over a dial or something to be able to like reach in and out and move between things in a kind of shifty way. I felt like it was really important to have those different performative modes. It's really, um, it's really interesting to hear your experiences from kind of, in a way, the embodied um, uh, relationship to the work. You know that, you, that it is a work that you hold and you you embody, and and I think for me, choreographically, yeah, absolutely one of the kind of central concerns. I think in my work, if I can say that grandly, or, or the, one of the central things I'm most interested in is this notion of unfix, unfixing or the potential of unfixing um, or re-destabilizing. And that, that's kind of, I guess, the dramaturgical through line in the work is, is um, yeah, that we don't get fixed in a mode. Um, and, and then all the kind of, um, implications I guess of that premise and and I think performance is so powerful in 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 that in its aliveness but also in its kind of temporality for us to play with those notions and I, I you know I'm always kind of like really beguiled by the reality that we can change what has already be what has already happened by what we see next so I've shown something or we've perform something and then where it goes next can uh, redo what we've seen or can dismantle it or reorganize it and that is like endless fascination for me um, yeah <laughs> we're um we're almost out of time and um, we do have one question in the chat which is from um emily butler the curator uh -huh. of the show and so, hi, Emily, um, I'm going to share her question. She says, it was so amazing to see this, having had the rare privilege of seeing the rehearsal. Um, I'm curious, did you feel physically different when returning to film post COVID? And I think maybe by that she means, was it, did you feel physically different re-entering the space post COVID or what was the, the physicality like mm. maybe after the fact of the pandemic and the, uh reality of touch um being something that we were unable to do and that was very important to this particular piece if i if i'm all right to speak now um yeah i think i think it definitely was different i think there was a there was a sensation of um i suppose trepidation is the right word really like it was it was more of a you know the gallery is sort of and this piece was to me sort of a mirror or um, an abstraction of London. Like I'm, you know, I've, I've come back into London city. I'm like, Oh, blimey. Like it's all around. I've, I've got the tube and I'm like, Oh, bloody hell. Everyone's coughing around there. And then, you know, I kind of get into this space and it's just kind of um, a minimal version of that. So I suppose I, def I, I definitely felt calmer. I think, I think, the way that COVID affected this piece wasn't as drastic as I thought it would. As we was leading up to this piece, I thought, right, well, I thought there'd be a lot more work than we had to do. I think luckily, like, because we're all quite a close collective, the recalibration process wasn't as drastic as I thought it'd be. Um, yeah, I, I, I you know, I think a lot of artists are used to working in isolation. When the isolation came, it was, you know, for me personally, I absolutely loved it. Do you know what I mean? But um, that's all I've got to say on the matter. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else want yeah, to say I'd, something? <laughs> yeah, I just remember um, the kind of nonsensical joy of coming back and all being in there 
back working together because it was the we as I said before we it was we had just done the dress rehearsal when everything lockdown began and we were suddenly all sent away and then the first thing we got to kind of do again together was together and was doing this project and it was kind of like like weirdly like there'd been this weird time between us that missing but then suddenly it was like nothing had happened and we were all very elated and like, ecstatic and this kind of crazy kind of joy to be doing it again I don't know it kind of put things into a bit more perspective like oh yeah this is been longing for this is sort of thing that I've been missing um yeah and kind of re let's um yeah just like drilled home how much I enjoy doing this sort of work with such wonderful people yeah we feel like such a <laughs> privilege to be able to like actually engage with something inside a room with yeah other people that I don't live with it just was like suddenly I don't know the the stakes for that become would have become a lot higher so it was it was yeah that felt like a huge privilege and and for my experience like I, I came to watch the dress rehearsal because I wasn't in it um and that was I think you mentioned earlier Joe that was like day one of the first stay at home period or something like that and I remember being quite anxious like coming to watch that performance and like all the different protocols that were going to be in, in put in place and like thinking about how I'm going to manage that when I have to hold a space with performers like what are, what are they everything feels like there's these invisible mystery protocols that are just like manifesting through you know what out of necessity for like people's health and um yeah, I don't really know where. It just felt like a huge relief to be able that something could actually happen again. I just felt really grateful that that everything hadn't just kind of ended. I agree. And it feels like to me that live performance is still so far away. Um, mm. I mean, I, 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 I think theatres can now be open and sporting events with social distancing, but of course, so many theatres can't afford to open um, and and somehow yeah to me it just feels like it's maybe next summer that that might happen again uh, maybe not I don't know so in a way with Emily's question I'm also quite curious how it is to to watch that you know the film this evening or or over these coming two weeks given that that kind of physicality is just is kind of disallowed at the moment so I'm curious in a sense what, what that resonance might be mm. so um I'm going to draw our conversation to a close um it's been really really lovely to have you all together to have the opportunity to to speak with you to share the work finally publicly you know to a broad audience and and you know we'll get feedback and ideas coming through I'm sure in the coming two weeks so um to all of our viewers for watching thank you um the film will be available to watch again on the Whitechapel website from this evening until the 17th of December so please take your in your own time go back and spend some time with it um thank you to Joe, Eve, Sean, Temi and Tom for being with us this evening